Um, and they're always this nice green too when they're babies, at least in the book I saw. I don't know if they always are. Maybe Pacific ones are different or something. Nature, here and now. How y'all doing? I'm Chris. You are watching Nature, here and now. How about that? We finally got some snow. Last year there was no snow at all. And uh, not only do we have some snow, but it's before Christmas. I was just begging to have snow before Christmas. Um, although it's going to be 9 degrees tonight. That's, it's already cold. But anyhow, let me cut to the chase. Uh, I was digging through some old clips and came across some clips from a bunch of years ago that are just absolutely amazing in my opinion. And I'm going to share them with you and also my friends uh, Charlotte and Clementine. <laughs> It's actually Charlotte and Clementine. But, you know, people like to have their names pronounced correctly. Anyhow, check this out. Uh, you're going to love this. So, a bit of backstory here. Years ago, my friend Alaska Joe and I went camping in this coastal habitat, right? And uh, the campground was just overpopulated. They actually doubled capacity, but not, did not expand the size of the campgrounds. And uh, so trying to find anything was just like, forget about it. Uh, especially at night, you know, we'd go out at night and all the paths in this park were paved and uh, that was most unfortunate. So we're like, you know, let's go off path and go into the woods and try to find things. Every single time we did that, rangers would show up and be like, you got to stay on the paths. And it didn't matter if it was midnight, you know, 1.30, they just kept on showing up. Now I see two reasons for that. One, Joe's got a loud voice. <laughs> I'm blaming you, Joe. Number two. They must have had like infrared, you know, thermal cameras or something set up because as soon as we do it, they would show up out of nowhere in their vehicle, their little golf carts. Anyhow, the last day we decided to hit the bay and we're looking around for stuff. We found some massive horseshoe crabs. We found tons of crustaceans, you know, little crabs of different species, uh, really cool coastal leaf hoppers and really cool stuff. So as we're in the water, something caught my eye. And uh, it was a glint of rainbows, you know, glimmering in the sunlight. And as I looked closer, I was like, holy cow. I found my first and so far only comb jelly. Okay, this is a type of jellyfish that's shaped like a bell, kind of. And, uh, but they've got these little rainbows that flicker along the sides. Um, it's actually the largest animal form that swims by utilizing cilia. So these are actually like little hair things that wriggle back and forth and propel it forwards in the water. But these cilia or swimming appendages actually scatter light. And while they do that, it, sh it looks like little rainbows just lighting up. It looks like they're covered in LEDs, but it, they actually are not bioluminescent. They're just breaking light apart. So I'm trying to film that. The water is kind of choppy and cloudy. It's very difficult. So in an attempt to film this thing a little easier, I decide to dig a bit of a pool in the sand and let it fill up with water and then eventually settle and become clear enough to put the jellyfish in there and film it. That didn't really work out too well. I wish I had the equipment I have these days, but I was just working with a little pocket cam back then. And that is when I discovered, for me, one of the most exciting things I've found in the wild so far. Millions of horseshoe crab eggs. These things were a little bigger than say a peppercorn and crystal clear many of them and within that that little egg that little sphere of glass you could see the tiny horseshoe crab just kind of swimming around. I mean they were pretty cramped in there each one had had one animal in it and uh, but they just swim around in it um, and it was like it was absolutely amazing you could make out their eyes and some of their appendages, where their tail was going to be and everything. These things were absolutely amazing to look at. I wanted to take these things home, but there was no way I could keep them alive. Hey, if you watched the video this far, please hit that like button and comment on any cool stories you have about the ocean or horseshoe crabs or anything else. Comments really help. And while you're at it, please hit subscribe if you're not already subscribed to my channel. It allows me to put out more content like this. And, you know, I only make money through AdSense, which is like pennies, literally. 
Um, so anything helps. Thanks a lot. Back to the video. So while I was completely fascinated, totally absorbed in looking at these things, I decided to you know dig a little bit more and they were just everywhere by the hundreds. And some of them had already hatched. And these things were walking around in my hand. They were so small that they could get stuck in the treads of the palm of my hand. Uh, it was just the coolest experience ever. And you know, while there were hundreds of thousands of these things, along the splash zone, um, you know, just a few of them will actually make it to adulthood, which takes like nine to 12 years for them to reach maturity. Um, the average lifespan for a horseshoe crab, if something doesn't kill it, is like 20 years, I think. But these are crucial animals for wildlife around the globe. I mean, birds that migrate from other parts of the world will come through like South Jersey and Northern Delaware and the Cape May area, and they will nest and feed on things such as these baby horseshoe crabs, and then uh, you know migrate to other parts of the world where things will prey on them. You know, sometimes fish will come up here and feed on all of these, and uh, then go elsewhere, and then larger things will feed on those fish, and the food chain just continues on. So a lot of life actually depends on these baby horseshoe crabs in Delaware and New Jersey. It's absolutely incredible to experience this firsthand. If you're wondering what these baby horseshoe crabs feed on, uh, they actually eat you know, tiny invertebrates, tiny worms, really small crustaceans, and all sorts of you know, little yeah. invertebrates and things like that. And uh, as they get older, they just feed on bigger versions of the same things, um, unless they become food for something else. Anyhow, I just really wanted to share this with you because you had to have been there. Seeing these things in person is phenomenal. I mean, tiny little glass spheres with this little crab swimming around inside it. It was just like a little sphere of magic. I have no, no other words for it. Uh, anyhow, thanks a lot for watching this video. I know it's a short one, but I mean, how cool is that? You don't usually see baby horseshoe crabs. You usually see these giant things, right? Uh, now, I am absolutely freezing. I cannot feel my fingertips. Um, actually, I feel pain in my fingers. Uh, I'm not even joking. Um, so, I'm getting out of here. Chris Ignato, I'll see you in some other video. Thanks for watching. Charlotte is a bit of a marine super nerd, if you will. So, obviously, I thought of her and her sister when I was digging through my, you know, old footage. So, you can thank them for this video. Oh, dude, I'm sorry, man. Like, I know it's not, not that funny. But I'm laughing at the irony of our... I'm that guy. Well, apparently, <laughs> I, I don't even get, I don't even get a shoe pack. My, I lost my socks too, and there was a coffee cup. <laughs> Not intentional. That was very unintentional. It must have came in like five feet.